Thanks, my grandkids, for that wonderful, wonderful number. Praise the Lord for that. Our topic today, the seven churches, the seven church. Today, Jesus speak to the church in Smyrna, the period of pagan persecution, A.D. 100 to 323. The word Smyrna means myrrh the seeds of which we use for the sweet incense. As Jesus walked among the golden lamps, he comes to Smyrna, bringing his message to it. Listen to it. Unto the angel of the church in Smyrna, this thing said the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogues of Satan. So fear none of those which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried, and he shall be tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a ground of life. Revelation chapter 2, verse 8 to 10. As you remember, this was a time of pagan persecution under the Roman Empire. So many of God's children suffer martyr in the 2nd, 3rd, and early 4th century. To this persecuted uh, Christian, the message came, Fear none of those things which thou hast suffered. The most severe persecution by pagan Rome began under Diocletian and continued from 303 to 31 to 313 AD, exactly 10 years or 10 prophetic days for which prophecy a day stand for a year. In those days, it was often worth a man's life to be Christian under Diocletian, were stuck with this word, the Christian are no more, the Christian are no more. As you remember, many hard-stirring stories have been written about martyrs of this period. There is the story of a slave girl, only 15 years old, who stand for the faith was surprised to the church. While we were all trembling, they wrote, and her earthly mystery, who was herself one of the contending mothers, was apprehended, least through the weakness of the flesh. She should not be able to make a bold confession. This girl not only endured torment herself, but she and many others as they pour their witness to Christ by moderns. I am a Christian. She confessed again and again. No weakness is carried on by us. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And some days she was put to every torture in any effort to make her implicate her Christian mystery. She was kept in dark darken and brought into every day and forced to see the agony of her friends as they were roasted in an iron chair, torn to pieces by lion. She seems to have superhuman endurance. So they racked her for morning from morning to night. Nothing could vanish her patience. Her only answer was, I am a Christian. No weakness was done by us. Few weeks later, they took her to the circle, fastened her on a cross, within reach to the wild beast in order to frighten her fellow confession. A lion was let loose upon her. 
She looked into each mouth and smiled like a queen, and the master did not touch her. As you know, only a hundred years before, the first slave girl had been converted to Christ by Apostle Paul at Philippi. Now this noble sister of her cast holy defiance at the mighty empire and look it in the face of unfleshly. Her fearless testimony to her faith strengthened others and proved herself stronger than the persecution power of Roman glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. More than that, she was taken down from the cross, returned to her darkened, and finally brought back for execution. But she fled not. She was first scorched in an iron chair, and at last cast before a furious lion and tossed her in savagely. But even then, the sharp blade of execution swords was needed to take her last lingering throb of life. Her body was burned to ashes and cast into the river, my friend. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. As you remember, the storm of persecution was swept on by a decree issued at AD 313. The year Constantine placed Christianity on an equal footing with the other religion of the empire. The blood of martyrs proved to be the seed of the church. The faith of Christ could not be stamped out by even most cruel persecution, my friend. Remember that. Notice the wonderful promise to this church which suffer imprisonment and death at instigation of the devil, my friend. He that overcomes shall not be hurt of the second death. Revelation chapter 2 verse 11. As we study the 20th chapter of this book of Revelation, we shall find that both the wicked and righteous will be rise from the first death, the resurrection of the wicked being a thousand years after first resurrection. The first resurrection, the resurrection of the righteous, take place at the second coming of Christ. Remember that. The wicked are brought forth a thousand years later in the second resurrection, the resurrection of damnation and destroy in lake fire. This is the second death, my friend. Revelation chapter 20, verse 14, in which God's true children will have no part of it. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And now, Jesus speaks to the third church, Pergamos, the period of worldly power, and spiritual weakness, A.D. 323 to 538. The word Pergamos means height or elevation. The city of Pergamos itself was built on a lofty hill. It represents the period of the Christian history following the conversion of the Emperor Constantine to Christianity and set up of the full union of church and state. The church, which formerly was persecuted like her Savior, had no place to lay her herd, gradually grew into a mighty power that could contempt, that could command untold wealthy, and the army of the imperial Roman at this time as Philip, the great church history say, she received into her possum vast deposit of foreign material from the world and from heathenism, my friend. Remember that. 
as you know, gradually many heathen rites and ceremonies were introduced into the church, and some of them are still evident in certain circles of organized Christianity. But there are many faithful believers in those days, my friend, as the heavenly watcher declared to the angel of the church in Pergamos, write these things, said, He which had the sharp sword with two edges, I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is, and thou holdest fast my name, hast not denied my faith, even those days were empty best, was my faithful mother, who was slain among you with Satan twelve. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Revelation chapter 2, verse 12 to 16. Folks, this period onward is the period of falling away or apostasy who stand before the world as the greatest Christian church. But God always has had a smaller body of a true believer whom he said, Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Luke chapter 12, verse 32. The sharp sword with two edges must be the word of Holy Scripture, which, as we read in Ephesians 6, verse 17, is the the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Glory to God. Remember that. So we thank God it is never God's plan to force the conscience. Religion liberty is a Christian principle. Jesus said, If any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. John 12, verse 47. If the church had always followed this principle, we would have a different story in this prophecy of revelation and a history explain it. So the doctrine of Palium spoken can be understood better by reading the book of number chapter 22 to 25. As you remember, Palium had been a prophet of God, but he became apostate and was hired by heathen king to curse God's people. However, God turned the curse into blessing. Later on, Balaam attempted to ruin Israel by advising the heathen to persuade the people of God to practice abomination, to practice abomination of pagan worship, which many did and were destroyed, my friend. Remember that. As you know, paganism, which had been unsuccessful in destroying the church, now aligned itself with Christian. And many false doctrine and practice became Christian custom. During this period of church history, Bacon superstition pour into the church like flood. And among the Bacon festival which were introduced into the Christian religion during this period was Sunday, the first day of the week, established as a holy day in place of the seven-day Sabbath of the Bible. Remember that. The Christian church today has absorbed too much of the spirit of the age. It is sick with unbelief and philosophy, neutralism in the things of God. One reason why there is so little persecution of Christian today is that the church is so much like the world today, my friend. It is the spirit of compromise, of doubt, of human speculation, of a denial 
of the scripture authority which has pushed the Christian faith, my friend. Remember that. So that's why the Savior's special warning to the church of Berkimus, repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against you with the sword of my mouth. Revelation 2.16 So it is strange that so often men are not ashamed of their sin, but they are ashamed to repent. Real repentance is, as Shakespeare said, the heart sorrow and a clean life ensuring. Real repentance is sorrow for sin, not merely sorrow for being caught, but a determination to change and live right. Repentance is not merely words, it is deed. It is a revolution of the inner man. It is praying for fruits. For few men repent because so few are willing to make a radical change in their living, my friend. Remember that. But there are many faithful believers in those days at the seven, as the heavenly watcher declare, I know thy works and where thou dwell, even where Satan's seed is, and thou holdest fast my name, as not denied my faith. This is a wonderful testimony to true servants of God of any age. Remember, the Lord knows where you live. He knows our works. He knows whether or not we hold fast His name, whether or not deny the faith. Let us pray that we may not deny Him either by our life or by our words, my friend. Remember that. So the Savior's promise to this church of Bergamos, to him that overcome will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will I give him a white stone, and in that stone a new name written, which no man knows, saving he that received it. Revelation chapter 2 verse 17. Not only does he promise spiritual food, but also the stone of hospitality and a new name which represents overcomes new character and his experience with Christ. A new name comes with a new life when one is born again and that name is overcomer in whatever language it may be. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Shall we pray? Dear God in heaven, we come before you this hour. Praise you and honor you because you are our creator. The King of King and the Lord of Lord, the beginning and the end. We praise you and honor you because you are our creator.